What is your plan at uh, quarterback? In free agency, can we find it in the draft or is it in the building? Mm -hmm. and, and I think that includes Russ. He and I have a great relationship. He wants to be back. And so that means something. Wait, Russ is coming back to Denver? If you know someone who might need 12 new bathrooms in their new home, may we introduce you to Mr. Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson, yes indeed. My man who's looking for a job as we speak. Oh no, Ru Russ is definitely not coming back to Denver. <laughs> Russ is actually the favorite to sign with the Steelers right now. If any of us thought the Russell Wilson departure from the Broncos would be a smooth, quick process, we were wrong. I don't trust anything Sean Payton says either. And that video clip was from Super Bowl week suggesting Russell Wilson wants to return to the Broncos only to see Russ and Ciara begin the process of selling their Denver home a week later is exactly like his stint with the Broncos. Hope followed by harsh reality. I did find humor though in the uh, comments on Rich Eisen's video about Sean Payton. Russell Wilson shouldn't be generating this much attention. His play over the last two seasons does not merit it, but Russ brings in the clicks, which is why Sean Payton saying Russ wants to come back generates buzz, which is why Tim Hasselback can go on ESPN and suggest Russell Wilson's done with football altogether this offseason. Listen, I think there's a chance Russell Wilson is out of football. Like, I, I'm not sure that there's definitely a landing spot for him. Not based on a source, but based on a feeling which is why Russ can also be linked in trade rumors to quarterback needy teams. It's like you need a degree in advanced physics just to get to the bottom of NFL trade rumors. I think he would actually be a great fit with the New York Jets, and here's why. Now, while I do not think we see Russell Wilson back in Denver, you can't believe anything you hear about NFL trades or free agency rumors until Schefter or Rappaport tweet about it. What does seem to be gaining steam though is the idea that the Pittsburgh Steelers are in the market to acquire a veteran QB, either Justin Fields or Russell Wilson, or most likely Ryan Tannehill. Today, I want to assess the likelihood of Russell Wilson going to the Steelers and dive into the three teams in the worst quarterback situations right now. That's good at sports. Football is over, and so are your unruly body hairs. Today's episode sponsored by manscaped.com slash goodsports. The Lawnmower 5.0, which comes in Manscaped's Performance Package 5.0 Ultra, is the powerhouse for pew plowing. Alliteration. Illumination is what you get when you get the bigger LED spotlight on the lawnmower, which sounds small, but is really useful for trimming in your nether regions. And by nether regions, I mean the penis and testicles base station, okay? The coolest thing about the 5.0 are the two interchangeable heads, Manscaped standard trimmer blade, and a new foil blade, which allows you to go bare down there. And it's still waterproof, so you can trim in the shower. Use my link below, manscaped.com slash goodsports for 20% off free international shipping, but only with my link. Remember, the Performance Package 5.0 comes with the Lawn Mower, the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer, the Crop Soother and Preserver, and two free gifts. I know how to count. The quarterback trade rumors are starting to w w warm up. I'd say heat up, but that'd be a flat out lie. I'm going to dial in on the Steelers and the Broncos with Russell Wilson, a little bit of Justin Fields. But first, let me touch on the Browns. The Browns are in a terrible quarterback situation because of Deshaun Watson. And Deshaun Watson could, could be done in Cleveland. And if he's not, I don't believe he's the answer moving forward. The good news for the Browns is they might have an out just not in his contract. Now you may remember Watson was accused of 24 to 26 varying degrees of sexual misconduct and even assault. Now none of those cases turned into criminal convictions and almost all of them were settled before they made it to civil trial. One case has not been settled and this means a lot. Mike Florio of Pro Football Talk reported that Watson may have to testify again in this unsettled case. Now you can have your opinions on Mike Florio, but one of the things he does very well is break down legal situations because of his, you know, 
law degree or whatever. Now this could turn into a huge storyline because if new evidence comes out or a guilty verdict is reached, the NFL could punish Watson further. I also believe as part of his contract with the Browns, their potential out is also if new evidence comes out against Watson or if he gets into trouble again. Uh, as good as the Browns roster is, and with Kevin Stefanski coming off his second Coach of the Year award, assuming he can pry the second award out of Steven Stefanski's cold, dead hands. Steven Stefanski. Kevin. <laughs> the Browns are in a good spot moving forward, assuming Deshaun Watson is good again. Just like Russell Wilson has been shredded for not playing up to his contract, how has Watson all the legal stuff aside, not been shredded for being just as average as Russ. Like the Broncos front office is full of the biggest idiots on earth because of the contract they gave Russell Wilson, right? And him not playing up to that contract. But for whatever, for whatever reason, uh, Deshaun Watson, we still have hope for. Is it because he's younger? Is it because Deshaun Watson's younger? I don't know. My point is if this current trial situation brings up one thing that gives the Browns the ability to get rid of that Deshaun Watson contract, I think they do it in a heartbeat. Now, I would argue uh, Russ, Russell Wilson, was quite a bit better than Deshaun Watson last season. And unlike when Russ was not playing, Jarrett Stidham didn't come in and light it up. Joe Flacco did, showing us just how underutilized a star like tight end David Njoku was. Flacco showed us the potential of the Browns offense. I loved riding the elite Flacco train, but that shit derailed like an Amtrak in the postseason. I do not think Flacco could be an answer for a full season. And I do not trust Deshaun Watson to be anywhere close to as good as the money he's currently making. And now Mitch Trubisky is rumored to the Browns as a replacement for Joe Flacco if he decides not to come back or if they can't get a deal done. The best the Browns can hope for is starting a combo of Flacco and Watson at different points in 2024 and winning a single playoff game. The Browns and Broncos are currently linked because Watson and Wilson were traded to each team in the same offseason. And the Browns may be in quarterback purgatory, but their roster's actually solid and their coach is as hot as you can be. The harshest truth I've had to reckon with is that the Broncos roster was not and is not nearly as good as I and many Broncos fans believed. We all thought Competent QB play would fix it all. <laughs> we were wrong. If Russell Wilson lands on, say, a more talented team, Denver's going to look even worse next season. Now, late last week, we learned that Russell Wilson and Ciara were showing their home and listening to offers for their 20,000 square foot, $25 million mansion in the Denver area. Russ is reportedly only willing to accept offers on his home if and only if they are made in one of his 12 bathrooms. Unlimited diarrhea. We've been waiting for the Broncos to say something official about a decision on Russ for the next two seasons, and they haven't. This real estate nugget would seem to suggest there's zero chance he and Sean Payton reunite after making up by joining the Mile High Club together. The guarantees in Wilson's contract for 2024 and 2025 kick in on March 17th. Boy, did I pick a bad year to try and stop drinking on St. Patrick's Day. If he's not released by that time, with a post-June designation, Denver has to pay him $85 million guaranteed. If they release him with the post-June first designation, they eat $85 million in dead cap. So I hope nobody buys Russ's house because it underperforms his asking price. And after a buyer falls through and another buyer falls through, Russ has to eat $24.5 million in dead house money and then sell it to me for $500K. Basically, that's my real world version of what I think the Steelers are waiting to do with Russ. Because if the Broncos release him with that post first June designation, another team can sign him and pay him the vet minimum. The Broncos are in the worst situation of all these bad situations. There will be so many holes on this roster that inserting any quarterback who can't literally perform magic puts them the furthest away from where they need to be. I thought the people linking Mac Jones to my Broncos were the worst. But then I saw this. 
Former Jets general manager Mike Tannenbaum proposed a trade that made my eyes pop out of my fucking skull. Zach Wilson for Jerry Judy, straight up. This mere suggestion gives me more confidence than ever that I could be not just an NFL general manager, but a top 10 GM in the league. While I find some solace in the idea that Sean Payton is so good with quarterbacks that he could save Zach Wilson, I for one have no interest in watching Sean Payton attempt to save another Wilson after he had been hacketed. I have seen people suggest Wilson, McCorkle, Tannehill, Garoppolo, and even Geno Smith before the Seahawks picked up his option to be the Broncos quarterback in 2024. I talked myself into Spencer Rattler two videos ago. That's the type of hell I'm living in. Which takes me to the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Steelers offense could be quite a bit better with, yes, even Russell Wilson. And they could pay him pennies on the dollar to start for two seasons while the Broncos fork over the majority of his salary. Essentially, the Broncos' bad contract could propel the Steelers to their first postseason win since Roethlisberger. In the last week and a half, the Steelers have emerged as the favorites to trade for Justin Fields. And then a few days later, the favorites, the heavy favorites to land Russell Wilson. And by favorites, I mean betting odds are changing. Here's what's hilarious. The Steelers are currently the odds on favorites to land Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. I may have gone to art school, but that math just don't add up, all right? Russ has better odds than Fields to land with the Steelers, which is funny because I think Fields has a bigger upside, but Justin also has a better chance to remain with his current team. Well, he did until last night when he unfollowed the Bears on social media and then followed Falcons players Bijan Robinson, Kyle Pitts, and Drake London. Five years ago, we would have all laughed at this, but now it's like, oh shit, Justin Fields is definitely a Falcon. After this simple fingertip move, Fields is the favorite to be in Atlanta this season, right? Close, second. Somehow the Steelers are still number one to land Justin Fields. They're also ahead of the Bears. Uh, the Falcons' current quarterback situation is terrible, but their roster is primed to jizz up, riz up a QB. Fields is from Georgia. His ability to run with B. John Robinson and Tyler Algiers is tempting, so this connection has been speculated on for a while. I'll assume this puts Justin Fields ahead of Kirk Cousins, who previously had been named the most likely player to land with the Falcons if he did decide to leave the Vikings. Kirk's chances of fitting in Atlanta skyrocketed, of course, after this dance. Ugh, sultry cousins. Now these social media moves by Fields certainly indicate that he would be open to playing in, in Atlanta. I would assume he would be open to playing in Pittsburgh as well. He is on his rookie deal, which means he hasn't had the luxury of putting in a no trade clause, so the Bears can trade him wherever they want. But I think they would actually work with him for a good fit for Fields, and it might come down to the Steelers being willing to give up the 20th pick in the draft. Atlanta has the eighth overall and the better second round pick. I don't think they would give up the eighth pick, which means the only way the Steelers could top them in a trade comp would be by shelling out the 20th. Here's what's tough to decipher about the Steelers. What interest do they really have in a veteran quarterback to come in and start ahead of Kenny Pickett? That's the million dollar question that they haven't made clear. If you read all of these headlines, it's significant. If you read this Bleacher Report article, then you get a full article about how the Steelers want to ride with Kenny Pickett for one more full season. And that entire article is based off someone else's article, Jerry Dolak of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Here's what's indisputable though. Kenny Pickett and Mason Rudolph both kind of suck at scoring. I'm not sure if Kenny Pickett is bad. I know he's ineffective. The Steelers can't score. Is the problem that Kenny's too ugly to score or that he has erectile dysfunction? If I don't know that, I don't know whether to prescribe their offense blue chew or plastic surgery for Kenny. As for Mason Rudolph, as expected, he did his best work on January 6th in Maryland, completing 90% of his passes. Mason came in and got the ball to George Pickens and Deontay Johnson. He provided an undeniable spark, but what backup quarterback didn't this season? Does anyone think Mason Rudolph is the long-term solution for the Steelers? I doubt it. 
the backups that played well this year, Joe Flacco, Josh Dobbs, Jake Browning. Oh, it was Tim, Bo Tim Boyle was the, the backup who did not provide a spark. I couldn't think of anything more boring than seeing the Steelers going into the 2024 season with Pickett and Rudolph. All this boils down to is one thing. Does Jerry Dolak have reliable sources within the Steelers organization? The wiggle room being created for these rumors all stems from his reporting that the Steelers are divided within the organization as to what to do at the QB position. If those who want to ride with Pickett one more year get their wish, then the splashiest signing the Steelers should expect is Ryan Tannehill, who would be a good veteran quarterback to have behind Kenny Pickett, who knows Arthur Smith's offense and Smith very well and can keep the shit, shit, ship, can keep the shit afloat if Pickett gets hurt again. Russell Wilson and Justin Fields aren't joining a new team though to be a backup. Although that would be the most savage thing Russ could do to the Broncos. <laughs> what I know personally, is that Russell Wilson is an upgrade over Kenny Pickett, and over Mason Rudolph, and probably over Ryan Tannehill. I also thought Russell Wilson would pair well with Arthur Smith before Smith got fired in Atlanta. So if those who see the Steelers in a win now mode want to improve the QB spot for cheap, Russ is an intriguing option. For urinating tree's sake, I hope they sign Russell Wilson because that alone might take him to over a million subscribers. Oh! I'm all for letting young quarterbacks develop. I really am, but you have to score points in today's NFL and pick it through one touchdown in his last seven starts. I think a lot of Steelers fans are showing patience with Pickett because he played at Pitt. If he were on any other team putting up those deplorable types of numbers, he'd be burned at the stake. Or his name would be Bryce Young. Bryce Young, similar stats. But Young was a rookie and didn't have the same weapons as Pickett. Now, I mean, Joe Burrow, throw through more than twice as many touchdown passes as Kenny Pickett last season. Zach Wilson threw more touchdowns than Kenny Pickett. Jake Browning on roughly 80 fewer attempts through double the TD passes. It's hard to understate how little the Steelers got from Pickett. Now maybe Matt Canada was the worst coordinator in human history, or maybe the Steelers need to do something drastic to improve their quarterback situation while their roster feels pretty close to contending. To answer the question, yes, it makes a ton of sense for Russell Wilson to play for the Steelers in 2024. He will find George Pickens deep, that I promise. The Steelers can actually run the ball, which Russ needs. If the Broncos could have run the ball more effectively, they would have made the playoffs with Russ. I'm not making a joke, I 100% believe that. And Russ is not gonna turn the ball over a ton. It's a two year commitment for the Steelers. And he throws the ball better than Justin Fields. If the Steelers were bold, they'd trade for Fields and set the NFL record in 2024 for rushing attempts in a single season because that's his strength right now. But one thing I know for sure, the Steelers are not a bold organization. So they're gonna get Russ. I believe it. They should get Russ, but they're probably gonna sign Ryan Tannehill. Thanks for watching That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here on YouTube. I'm on Twitter, at Brandon Perna. If you want to come talk football trash to my, my fingertips, please just subscribe. Just fucking subscribe here on YouTube. Who gives a shit about X?